Joe Lawson, what was your worst RC vehicle you ever owned and what happened to it? Um, what was my worst RC car? Oh, it's the uh, Tenacity MT. So the Losi Tenacity was a line of vehicles they came out with, I don't know, three or four years ago. Uh, really poorly designed vehicles in my opinion. They had this horrible plastic chassis that was like bottom loading batteries. The, the battery door broke on the first time I took it out. It was like all plastic, plastic shocks, plastic shock towers. Um, really cheap metals, like I mentioned, like, you know, kind of like the, the newer Tenacities. And it was like 400 bucks, which was just like ridiculous. So, uh, you know, non-adjustable turnbuckles. It, it was just not a good vehicle. The, the, the body was horrible. Probably the worst body on any vehicle I've ever bought. Like, it, it literally broke the first time I drove it. So, that was a bad vehicle. I eventually turned it into a... Uh, Tenacity Pro. They they used to make like this Proformance kit, which was like 100 bucks, and basically came with aluminum chassis, aluminum shock tires, aluminum shocks, adjustable turnbuckles. So pretty much everything you need to make it like a good uh, vehicle, and that's the way it should have came. And and that's actually eventually how they do come now. So Tenacity DB Pro, TT Pro, LaserNet, those are all have that Proformance upgrades already out of the box. So I did sell it. Um, I'm not really sure why I sold it, but I, it's probably just because I didn't like. Um, short course trucks or something and just ran out of space. Uh, City Sushi, your thoughts on RC racing, will it survive? Um, it will survive in one form or another for sure, like forever. I think it's declining in popularity and I do think that's partly due to just the amount of different options people have. You know, 20 years ago, you pretty much had on-road and off-road and you know, with off-road you had like buggy or truck, that was it. So everything you bought, you could, race right but now people are buying stuff they are just bashers they're just high speed vehicles just drag cars or crawlers or whatever so it kind of dilutes the market i think and people are just all split up into different areas and so yeah racing is now kind of a small part of rc whereas you know 20 years ago it used to be a big part i mean 20 years ago even the traction vehicles or, or kind of the quote bashers or ready to run uh, we're all based off race vehicles so it kind of sucks because uh, I do think RC racing is important and a fun part of the hobby. Um, next up, Combo RC. Driving tips for new on the hobby. Central spare parts to have. Uh, okay, I guess it's kind of a general question, but uh, driving tips. I, w I would say first off, just get your throttle control down. I think that's actually more important and maybe more difficult than the steering part. Uh, because if you don't have the throttle down, then you can't really, I don't know, you can't apply, you, you're just not maximizing like traction, uh, you know, predicting your jumps, if you wanna do back puts or whatever, that's all about throttle control. Um, so yeah, uh, driving tips, I'm not sure if you're talking about like how to do stunts and stuff. So uh, stunts, um, it's really the acceleration in the air to do a backflip or, or the reverse, uh, you know, basically braking in the air do the front flip um, and then uh, yeah the 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 tires also are a gyroscopic effect and help stabilize the vehicle so I don't know if that helps you but yeah, it's not really about the speed to do the backflips it's about the acceleration in the air actually that um, makes you do those so I don't know if that's what you were asking about but yeah those are some tips also if you're learning how to drive driving a big wide area with like no hard objects like don't don't drive on the street with like a lot of curves and cars and trees and stuff because um, that's that's how you break stuff by running into hard objects essential spares uh yeah most cars for sure i keep uh spur gears uh seals like you know for the disc because you you may need to rebuild them uh stuff on the front end tends to break obviously from crashing into things so arms steering knuckles um can break fairly easily or i guess more often um those would I'd say be the required stuff. I mean, definitely have a temp gun so you can check the temperature of your vehicles. Um, what else spares? Just you know, shock oils, diff oils. Um, I don't know. Every vehicle kind of has different weaknesses, but you know, for sure the front end stuff is what you will break the most often. All right, Heathcliff, Razor, do you like vintage cars at all? Like the low C double X or RC ten B three? I do. I don't have any vintage vehicles that you can count the Tamiya Hornet um, yeah I, I kind of I don't really keep my RC cars you know like forever 
Um, so, and I'm not really going to buy an old vintage car for the most part. One thing I really don't like about vintage cars is, you know, they're all like SAE screws and stuff. And, you know, I can't stand the SAE. And then uh, also it's just hard to get spare. So that's a big part. You know, all my cars I like to keep as runners. So if I can't get spares, then, you know, I'm not going to be able to drive them really, right? So, yeah, I do like them. And uh, would I buy one if they did a re-release? Maybe. Maybe a low X. Um, but uh, yeah, don't really own any. Uh, Augustine Martinez, could you give some tips to learn how to bash better? So I think I answered that with the driving question before, but um, you know, it's just practice. Start out with like a reasonably powered vehicle. You know, if you have like a 6S monster, throw it out at 50%. Just, just drive. It's, it's obviously just driving and uh, practice. You know, if you have access to a track that does help your driving quite a bit, I mean, just learning how to get around the track and, uh, you know, get your steering and throttle control uh, really good, that, that does help a lot. So, but in terms of like backflips or whatever, I think I mentioned that. Uh, it's the acceleration, the air that does that. 4.6 RC. What is the best RC vehicle for beginners as far as money and performance? Um, so, it kind of depends what level you, you mean by beginner. I feel like the Armored Granite 4x4 3S BLX or the Big Rock Crew Cab would make a reasonable uh, starter car. I mean, you could run them on 3S, maybe just turn the power down to 15%. I, I think it's way too fast on 3S for a beginner. Beginner, um, You know, if you want something cheaper, I do have a video out on what I think is like the best entry level vehicle, which I think is the Amp, Amp MT from ECX. It's only like 140 bucks. You can buy it as a kit. You can build it. It's you know it's not fast. It's not gonna be able to take like massive power. Or, you know massive jumps and stuff. But um, you know if you're more on a budget, I think that's a that's the best beginner vehicle. Locomotive 282. Can we see how you set up your bench at the track? Well, glad you asked because I actually set it up here just for you. This is how I have my uh, pit area set up at the track. Although, you know, I would normally be using a pit mat, not this little cutting board thing. But um, you got my vehicle in front of us on a stand, a little parts tray in case I have to take stuff off. Uh, I got my tools on the right. So I have this little, you know, tool bag that I use uh, with all the hex drivers and stuff. Um, I got these two little boxes just full of random miscellaneous other stuff I might use like shock pliers, um, you know, tons of different pinions that I might use, electrical tape, uh, battery testers, you know, I don't know, weights to tune with <laughs> if I need to add weights. Um, and then another little box with like uh, programming card, balance boards, zip ties, their miscellaneous spare like sensor wires because those always go bad. Um, so yeah, I keep those in front um, and, and sometimes in case I forget my pit stand, I just use one of these boxes. Got my charger here on the left and usually a couple of batteries here being charged. Um, and that's, that's how I do it pretty much. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dylan Hassin, hopefully I'm saying that right. Are you going to get the Super Baja Ray 2.0? Uh, I believe that is the trophy truck version. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Super Rock Ray, I think, is the Desert Buggy style one. Um, no, I'm not going to get one. Uh, I haven't bought any large scale vehicles so far. Um, and if I did, I would probably buy an X Max. But yeah, it's, it's just big, expensive, would take up a lot of room. Um, not a whole lot of places for me to take it and be kind of pain in the butt, honestly, to carry that thing around. So uh, I'm not going to get one. I don't think unless something magical happens but um yeah sorry Hope, hopefully that does not disappoint you jaw uh, joe lawson what was your first and last rc you still you got till today not the freebies or from a company uh the first one i bought like i mentioned was a stampede 4x4 vxl from traxxas and the last rc vehicle i bought is what you see in front of us the t6.2 from team associate i haven't even driven this thing yet but uh with any luck, I'll be able to drive it uh, in a few days. So that's what I got. Um, bashing styles. Can you use the metal dog bone drive shafts from any other vehicle to fit the 3S Armas? Uh, they're all plastic and there has to be something that would fit. Uh, Arma does sell CVAs uh, for the Granite, I think. I think all the 3S vehicles, hopefully. Um, so yeah, if you really want metal drive shafts, but I would say you shouldn't need them, honestly. I mean, I, I never run metal ones and if you're breaking like drive shafts, then most likely your slipper is set too tight. I need to make a video on that, but 
just haven't gotten around to it. Um, Willabites, in which area in the world do you film your videos? I am in the San Francisco Bay Area, so that's where I live. And Aiden Campbell, are you going to get an X Max? Uh, maybe. If they come with a 2.0, I will definitely buy one. Um, if they don't, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. If I can find one like cheap, maybe I'll buy one. But um, it's not, unfortunately, not high on the priority list. Like I mentioned, I just don't have a lot of space to store it um, or even run it. So. Um, I also find that I have a lot more fun with like the A scale stuff. So the A scale stuff I think goes the fastest. Uh, you can do the most tricks. They're easier to kind of carry around and a little more, I don't know, just more convenient overall. So I don't really have any large scale vehicles, but who knows, maybe I'll pick one up. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the questions. Um, hopefully uh, you got what you wanted there. This video is getting super long, so I'll end it now. But yeah, once again, big shout out to all the subscribers and the viewers. I do appreciate it. And uh, if you like this video, throw it down in the comment below. Um, if you like to see more q and I can try to do that as well. Put, put down a comment saying that you'd like to see more of these, and I'll consider uh, doing this more often. So anyways, thanks for watching, and take care. Look for more of you soon. Talk to you later.